In today's video I will talk about the role of MRI in complex regional pain syndrome and the reason I do this is because a, a study of mine was just recently published in the European Journal of Radiology and this is basically the abstract of it. And we go through this quite quickly, uh, I'll put the link to the paper down below if you want to know more details. So. The definition of complex regional pain syndrome is basically a pain syndrome that is disproportional to the initial event, such as a trauma or surgery, and its corresponding healing stage. Now, very important, there cannot be an alternative explanation for the symptoms. So if a patient has a fracture, a stress fracture, or an infection, then it's not a CRPS. And for that, we have the so-called Budapest criteria. And we can show them quickly here. And you can see this is a collection of different clinical findings, some objective markers and some subjective markers in these different domains and none of these domains contain imaging and this is important because the clinical criteria or these criteria they changed in 2012 so this is new and all the previous studies that assessed imaging or mainly MRI for CRPS were older so these criteria are more strict than the previous criteria and MRI and or imaging for that matter is not part of the diagnostic criteria and the reason is quite obvious because it probably does not have a lot of helpful information but we go through the study right now so in the 1990s and 20 early 20s some studies attributed MRI and also other imaging modalities some value for the diagnosis of CRPS and in meta-analysis showed that triple phase bone centigraphy was actually better than MRI in 2012 but then as I already mentioned the criteria changed and since then we never really had to look at CRPS on MRI again so we wanted to re-evaluate the diagnostic potential of MRI in CRPS and for that we constructed a retrospective study and we looked for patients that were referred to our institution with suspected CRPS of the foot so we managed to get 50 patients uh, they all went through the clinical pathway with the Budapest criteria and had an MRI of the foot so based on this MRI we wanted to see can we make the distinction between CRPS and no CRPS and for that we had a collection of different findings very detailed findings and uh, created some scores so we looked at skin thickness skin enhancement edema bone marrow edema pattern and number of bones with bone marrow edema subcortical and periosteal enhancement uh, as we can see here in this bone scan image uh, which is believed to be diagnostic for crps we would assume that we can see this on mri and make the distinction and also we looked at soft tissue edema and effusion. So two, right, two readers looked at this and in the end we had 22 CRPS patients, type 1, and 28 non-CRPS patients. And you can see the final diagnosis in this no-CRPS group, stress fracture, osteoarthritis, uh, post-traumatic pain, post-operative pain, without fulfilling the Budapest criteria. So this is just the numbers, but basically no parameter was actually um, able to distinguish between these different groups. Now this one is below 0 0.05 however the bone or the muscle edema score was actually higher in the non-CRPS group so that's not helpful. Then here for the bone marrow edema the number of bones and the extents etc everything was not statistically significant and here's, uh, here are some examples this one was without CRPS this one was with CRPS and you can see this subcortical enhancement this is typically seen also in inactivity osteopenia or osteoporosis after prolonged disuse of the extremity but this finding alone was not able to differentiate between these two groups so in conclusion no MR imaging feature was able to differentiate between CRPS and non-CRPS patients and bone marrow edema was absent in up to 50% of CRPS patients now there is to, to say that the delay between the initial event and the actual MR scan was sometimes quite long because they were treated outside and only a few weeks or months after the initial event someone came up with the hypothesis that it might actually be a CRPS and therefore there was quite a significant delay. Now this is the key message for, for this video. The role of MR imaging in patients with suspected CRPS is to exclude an alternative diagnosis that would better explain the patient's symptoms and not to make the diagnosis of CRPS. So please don't put in your report this is typical for CRPS or something like that because it's probably not so easy and as I mentioned this is also reflected in the official clinical 
um, diagnostic criteria which do not contain imaging at all. Except that this little sentence here, that no other diagnosis can better explain the signs and symptoms. So that's the point. <laughs>